It's 2023 and I couldn't start the year with no other than with my friend Sylvie Nacheliango. Sylvie is a career strategist and founder of Career Minded Circles, a platform where she shares all things career management, job searching, interviewing, and mindful career moves. Sylvie found inspiration to help job seekers through struggles on her own. And as a career strategist and years working with job seekers, she knows firsthand what it takes to look for a job, especially when it involves a career or industry change. And in this interview, we specifically discuss the misconceptions of job searching, how to show up for ourselves during interviews, how to leverage personal branding for career growth, and the small things we can do to turn interviews into full-time job offers. If you're an engineer who's wondered how to stand out in interviews and job searching and want to learn the tips and tricks on how to perform an effective job search, then this video is for you. Sylvie has an awesome energy and I truly enjoy having this conversation with her. So let's jump into it. Here's Sylvie Machiliango. Sylvie, thank you for joining the New Access Club. I've been looking forward to this conversation with you to learn a lot about job searching, interviewing, and career management. Uh, overall, mostly to realize all the mistakes I've made in the past. So uh, how about before we get dive into it, you give us a quick intro by yourself and the work that you do. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me, Molson. Uh, my name is Sylvie Nacheliango and um, I am a career strategist. So I have a business that's called Career Minded Circles. Um, and what I do is I basically work with job seekers and professionals. Uh, so st early careers up through to what I call mid careers and um, helping them basically progress in their careers and shine in their job interviews, make sure that their CVs are good and they get picked for those interviews. So that's what I do. Um, in terms of my own professional background, I am a property manager slash project manager and I work essentially in construction. So new builds, working with developers and working in the public sector in the UK. That's awesome. And just to make sure we get get it out of the way, CV is, uh, is that what you, <laughs> you call resume? Because I think we're going to yes. have a, a language <laughs> barrier here, the UK yes. English with the American English. Yes, exactly. We call them CVs over here mm -hmm. um, and what you guys would call a resume, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because no, I think we do call CV something like a, for a longer form of of a oh, resume. Right. So I just, I, yeah. I would imagine you're referring to like the one page, two page exactly. document, right? Yeah, okay, cool. yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> okay, that's, that's awesome. So now about career minded circles, I, I would imagine that you started this platform because at some point you struggle with job search as well. You didn't have, uh, you made a lot of mistakes perhaps, and you realize that this is something you want to help other people with. So just in your own words, what motivated you to start Career Minded Circles and tell us more about that, you know, your, give us an intro of all the work you do, but uh, how, tell us about your Instagram platform, for instance, things that you do post on a regular basis. Sure. So I, you've touched on it just then. I started Career Minded Circles because I remember at the time when I graduated, so around 2010, um, I was fresh out of law school. I had, I knew I had enjoyed my um, my degree. I did well. I got a 2-1. Um, again, the translation of that to a wider audience, we can get into another time. But yeah, I, I did well but then i thought i don't know what i want to do i did know i had had work experience i had summer placements um during my course of my degree but i knew that i didn't want to practice law um but the help that i got in terms of right you finished formal education let's now get you a job was looking back um or non-existent um, if I'm being completely honest. So fast forwarding to last year when I officially decided to launch my Instagram page, it's something that I've been doing for the last four years in terms of career minded circles. I've been doing it in the background, working with job seekers, um, professionals, as I've said, but I said, let's put it out there. Loads more people can um, use this service uh, because I know myself what it feels like to be looking for a job 
or uh, wanting to transition into a different career or a different path, not really having that modern day help, modern day advice. Um, but also on the other side, flip, uh, flipping the coin, in my role now, and over the last four years, as I said, I'm also doing some hiring and some uh, recruitment. I sit on the recruitment panels. So it's a combination of I'm aware of what is required, what makes a good interview and what makes not so good interview. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful. And, and it's good that you decided to create that platform after so many years already helping people because, mm -hmm. you know, then people like me who are not so close to you can get, take advantage of that. I, every, I, I think you are one of the first few people that show up on my feed every time I open on, on Instagram. Yeah. There's always a new reel, a new yeah. uh, video about something in regards to career management, job searching, yeah. interviews. And it's yeah. great to, to, to have that kind of uh, uh, knowledge uh, acquisition yeah. on Instagram and on social media. I love yeah. going in and I, I you see me commenting on your posts. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I made that mistake. Yeah, I <laughs> learned. Uh, I, yeah. I have learned about this in the past. And, and it's so many mistakes that, you know, professionals make when it comes to career, uh, their careers, their job search, their interviews mm -hmm. uh, process that can cost them money, can cost them opportunities. So I'm glad yeah. that you, you're there daily uploading something <laughs> to teach us something. Uh, yeah. So now about job searching, um, mm -hmm. I can talk, I probably made every single mistake in the book. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I, 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 in your own words, I want to hear more about, you know, why are some misconceptions when it comes to job searching and yeah. what are some effective ways to do job search, like in this day of age? Yes, of course. So I would look at this in, I have two answers to this. Um, again, just bringing back the career minded circles, uh, the name of the business. And the, a lot of people ask me about that one part of that is the mindedness it's about being mindful it's about showing up as who you are and um, that's one mistake that a lot of people make um, a lot of people think right okay i've got to get this job interview i have to put on my interview voice or i have to i don't know maybe dress in a suit if you never really dress in a suit and unless it's specifically required it's just these things um which are i guess about us as people um, I am such a big advocate for showing up as who you are, whatever that is. And if the company that you're interviewing for doesn't allow you to do that, I always say, you know, rethink, is that where you want to work for? Um, the other part is more to do with obviously the actual interviewing. We've talked about mistakes. I think all of us have made mistakes when it comes to interviewing. Um, a lot of people actually don't get the technical aspects of their interviews wrong. So, for example, we've talked about property management construction. There's a lot of laws, regulations, etc. Most people think, oh, I'm really good at my job. Therefore, I can apply for a construction manager job. I'll get it all good because they have that technical knowledge. But it's also the rest of it that comes with interviews that tell me about yourself question you know, the how are you, people forget to make small talk even, which interviewing is sometimes as uncomfortable and awkward for the interviewer. They also want to get to know you. So yeah, it's knowing how to answer those commonly asked interview questions also gets you the job as much as knowing the technical side. So yeah, to summarize, be yourself, but also really know how to answer those questions which guaranteed regardless of the industry you're in the country you're in will come up yeah for sure that, that that's lovely mm -hmm. and now uh, to back up a little bit when it comes to let's say before we get into the interview part of the whole job search process yeah uh, applying for the job in the first place you think just like mm -hmm. applying online is the best way to do it perhaps uh you know reaching out to a recruiter what what do you think is the best way to you know, get your resume or CV all the way at the top so that it's read, it's considered, and then eventually yeah. an interview process will get started. Absolutely. I would say uh, the advice I give all my clients is make sure you're not just applying online as in the job boards. Um, make sure that you are 100% using social media, 
even if it's Instagram, we know that people are getting jobs on TikTok as well. We know people LinkedIn, for example, of course, you know, is your LinkedIn up to date? Are you actually using it? Are you commenting on articles within your field? All of that stuff is part of the job search. I think people just think of job search and they think, okay, physically typing out a CV resume application form, but it's everything else that's surrounding. Um, so, you know, what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you having interactions with, and it's not just LinkedIn, for example, um, as a number one, make sure you're actually speaking to people. So not just sending connections and having 500 because it's no use having 500 connections if you don't actually make those meaningful um, conversations, meaningful relationships with people, uh, whether it's recruiters or people in your industry. So that's number one, make, taking advantage of social media, whatever that means to you and whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I would also say, um, apart from applying online, which everybody knows about, going to job fairs or careers fairs or events, careers events, so, so important. I've personally had probably two jobs in my um, career where I've gotten a job because I've gotten myself out on a Saturday and um, I've spoken to one or two recruiters and I've managed to get myself an interview. So I think, yeah, the combination of flying online, social media, but also actually physically going out into the world and connecting with the industry you want to work in. Yeah, I think you what, what you're getting at is basically we have to nurture our network before we take advantage of it, or before we rip the benefits, because, you know, can I just add somebody on LinkedIn or social media and, you know, just like, hey, give me a job right away. Yeah, there has exactly. to be some sort of connection such yeah. that the person is comfortable either referring you to a job or connecting you with somebody else that they know and trust. And it's mm -hmm. all about building that that trust with the people that you, you connect with on, on, online. And I think this is something you talked a lot about on your platform, especially when it comes to personal branding and how it's important uh, in, in the job search process. Not only, obviously, when we're actually looking for a job, but it's something that you have to build upon uh, along the way. So I, I'm curious if you have any thoughts about personal branding when it comes to overall career management, job searching, interviewing, how does that benefit us uh, along the way? Yeah, sure. I mean, Personal branding, I touched on it at the beginning in terms of like knowing who you are, showing up as who you are. Um, but I think that personal branding also it's like aligning, aligning as long as you can align yourself as well to without naming names, there's lots of big companies out there. People sometimes think, oh, I want to work for X, Y, and Z tech company. Let's go there. Um, but in terms of for, for myself and I earlier on in my career, I did this a lot. I would say, oh, big property company, definitely want to work for them. And this is something I learned the hard way, got the job, shiny offices, <laughs> central London. And I thought, I really, this is not my environment. It's loads of people. There's about 50 people, 50, 60 people, the same job title as me. Over time, I learned that that's not the environment I thrive in. That's not the environment I, I like to work in. I like to work for smaller teams where maybe there's 10 of us with the same job title because in the end, when there's so many people in a company, it can be that you are just a number. Um, so personal branding, going back to that personal branding, I think like understanding myself, what do I, who am I as a person? Um, how do I do I prefer this sort of buzzing environment, almost sales type environment that we've seen in some classic films? Or do I prefer the sort of quieter? And I make sure that I bring all of this into conversations, actually, when I'm interviewing for my own jobs um, with hiring managers and recruiters to see if it's actually a match, um, you know, again, to bring in online dating. <laughs> Online dating, <laughs> you know, I, I compare this all the time. Online dating, is it a match? And it's like that sort of mindset shift. Um, if if 
my branding isn't really something that you're looking for and I don't like your branding, then it's not really going to work. And and in the in the corporate world, in the world of work, it's far too late for you to start asking yourself, what do I actually like as a professional? Um, what's the environment I'll thrive in? It's too late to ask that question once you have the job. Um, I don't know if that answers the question or if I've gone round in circles. No, no, I, I, I think you touch on a really great point because, you know, personal branding, to my, to my understanding, it's more about the reputation yeah. that you have and that you build with people, the trust that you build with people and obviously highlighting your strengths, the things that you like doing and enjoying. That's something that you mentioned. And I, I support that idea, right? The hard part is executing that brand when you're coming across with different people. So let's say you go on an interview. Yeah. Uh, most likely if you're looking for a job, you're in an interview process, you need a job to, because you need money. That's mostly yeah. why people go look for a job, but it's really hard for people sometimes to go ahead and say, Hey, to treat the whole interview process, like a conversation, it's a match, like you're saying, where I'm yeah. looking to see if what they're offering is what I like and what I'm offering is what they're looking for. Um, yeah. And it's, it's really hard to treat that interview as, okay, they're interviewing me and I'm also interviewing them. And yeah. because of that concept that most of us, I'm speaking for myself because in the past, that was a thing for me. Yeah. Uh, we will look for a job, like obviously the benefits of pay, are they paying me accordingly to my responsibilities and so forth. When you consider yeah. those things, it's really hard to pay attention to, okay, what kind of environment do I want? What kind of environment mm -hmm. do I thrive in? And mm -hmm. It's good that we reflect on this, especially when you're doing a job search. I, these days, let's say somebody reaches out to me about a job or something, like I will search about the company or uh, about the, the culture that they seem to have that they publish online, their brand. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and I'll see if that's a kind of environment that I like to thrive in and or that I yeah. like to part, be part of. So for me, let's say my previous company, uh, I think diversity and inclusion was a little bit of an issue for me because I didn't see you know, yeah. diverse, uh, or a d diverse group of people in leadership positions. So my next yeah. company, which is my current company, I make sure that this was the thing, like my entire C-suite, C-suite, uh, leadership of my company is all made out of women. To me, that makes me feel good because I, I can yeah. see that there's opportunities for underrepresented groups in the industry to go up the ladder and go and climb into leadership positions. So th yeah. these are the things that we had to pay attention to when we are uh, doing uh, job search and personal brand branding not only helps you highlight what yeah. are those things that you're good at, that you like to be part of uh, and what are just those interests and passions that you have, but also make sure that it is a match with uh, what mm. the organization that you're applying to is, 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 is looking Most, for. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. You've touched on that sort of like diversity and inclusion. Like that's, that is a big one for sure, regardless of where you go. Um, I remember about three years ago, I interviewed for, um, well, I was looking for, again, a very well-known company. Um, and I was looking and I was thinking, okay, so you guys really pride yourselves on you know, we're very diverse, we're very inclusive. Again, went on the website and everybody looks the same. Everybody has been to Oxford or Cambridge <laughs> University. And that is always even even but even when even when you've got okay, black people, Asian people, everybody, everyone is represented. Let's take race as an example, fine. But sometimes you then have the example here is the Ox Oxford Cambridge. If you only have everybody that's working for you is from Oxford, from Cambridge, again, that's just one way of thinking that doesn't really show me that you're really that diverse. And these are questions that now I sometimes, as long as you're not coming across as hostile, I think it's perfectly okay to ask some of these questions in an interview. If you're on the website, and it's looking like, hmm, okay, so they say that they care about diversity and inclusion, but I've got a question about this. When they say at the end, do you have any questions for us? There's ways to phrase these questions, ways to ask it. Um, and it's a, it's a reasonable question to ask. 
Um, and this is the sort of thing that I'm constantly working with a lot of my clients to try and address because I think sometimes all of us have unfortunately had bad experiences in the workplace. And like you say, when you move on, you want to make sure the bad experiences you've had in your last job don't come up again. So definitely asking those questions is so, so important. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you mentioned a really good point about the, the question they, 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 they say at the end, do you have any questions for us? Yeah. This is like the opportunity for us to, you know, nail down any doubts that you may have, because it, it's that opportunity to interview them and learn more about, you know, the, mm. the, the company itself. We had to dig in and get information because obviously when they're talking, oh, this company is amazing, this company is this, this company is that. Um, they're not yeah. being really honest unless you're specifically asking them for something, which is that diversity and inclusion question yeah. is really important. And if I know it's a challenging question, obviously, mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody that will come in to interview somebody, uh, will be prepared to answer those questions, but that that's how you get the honest truth. When they're not prepared, they'll tell you, you know, they were going to reflect on what yeah. they, her experience has been, what they have seen around in their culture and then answer you uh accordingly yeah. so definitely ask that question if you're part of a, underrepresented groups because um it, it matters you, you don't want to dedicate your time your knowledge your energy to a company where they won't treat you like anybody else or they won't i um or they won't just use your performance your uh uh your strengths and and how you're doing the job as a full consideration whether you go up the ladder if you go into leadership position and they let all the yeah. things are beyond your control like your color your uh, your skin color or your race your background all these things that are mm -hmm. beyond your control get in the way so i i definitely <laughs> encourage everyone to to ask a question now yeah to follow up on you know asking that question asking questions at the end of the interviews what are small things that people tend to forget along the interview process that will make a difference in turning an interview into a job offer mm -hmm. small things to be like honest, what are things that we can do to you know increase our chances of getting a job offer after we've been interviewed yeah. or doing the interview yeah I would say so during the interview, I would mm -hmm. say like being as personable as you can. Um, as I say, I have I sit on interview panels myself and there are days where I probably will do five or six and on a really busy day, 10 job mm -hmm. interviews. By the time you've got to the end, <laughs> um, you know, we have to remember that hiring managers, recruiters are just people as well on the other side. Um, so if you're coming into the interview and regard, I know that nerves get in the way sometimes and there are ways to like calm nerves, but remember to show that enthusiasm. And I know for myself, and I say this because from personal experience, I have been told um, earlier on in my career that, hmm, I couldn't tell if you wanted the job or not. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> tell if you were really interested because I was just so serious and so focused and so like, yeah. So just those, those are small minor things. And especially as well, if you know, you have a bit of a monotone voice, which sometimes I do, you know, like, can I dial it up a little bit? You know, those those small things it's not about like changing who you are and like doing a massive performance um to be able to get the job but just um yeah showing up a little bit differently especially if you're aware of your own traits um so that's during the interview after the interview i would say people say oh you know don't send a thank you no it's just desperate you know personally I would say, sure, it probably wouldn't be the only reason you get the job. It would depend on your actual performance during the interview. But, you know, when all things are equal between candidates, um, it goes back to enthusiasm again. When all things are equal, the person that's going to send me a thank you, Sylvie, for taking the time to interview me. I had a good time. I learned so much about the role, about the company, about yourself. I look forward to hearing from you. That 
reminds me again if I've interviewed on one day 10 people and we've had a round of three days I will remember the one person that's emailed me out of the 30 people so yeah small yeah. things but they make a difference yeah that definitely makes a difference it's it's do you do you have mentioned this throughout the interview on how the technical part of the interview or technical ability of somebody it is probably the same from candidate to candidate who are you know applying to a specific position right mm -hmm. like um technically a lot of people can do the job but what makes a difference is that those people's skills that they have they bring in the way they speak the way they uh use their body language the way that they connect with the interviewing uh, panel uh, yeah. that, that's what makes you stand out. And the, the more personal you are, the more you show those personality traits, the better yeah. or the easier it will be to, to, to make a difference and stand out from a group of people who can't offer the same thing except for those people's skills. So exactly. uh, I'm glad that you, you touched on that. I, the thank you notes part, I tend to neglect it uh, before, but I realized mm -hmm. that Besides obviously getting a job offer makes you stand out for getting the job offer. Even if you don't get the job offer, I feel like yeah. uh, the recruiters or the interviewers, they feel an obligation to tell you or give you more information as to why you didn't get the job. So yes. if you send a thank you note, obviously it looks like you're doing your diligence. You're making sure that everything yeah. is good and covered on your end. But you're also looking yeah. in to learn, you know, what's next step and why not. Mm -hmm. And I have heard from people telling me, Hey, you know, this is why we chose this other candidate or we're looking for this. I didn't think you show mm -hmm. this. Uh, I think you were a little bit monotone and in our, in this job, we need somebody that's very personable, like all these yeah. things that leave you wondering if you don't have that information and then you go into the next interview and you don't know yeah. why you need to change so when right, you send exactly. that thank you note it puts people in a position to say hey this person deserves an answer this person deserves yeah. to learn why or why not they didn't get the job and yeah. uh yeah. it's just a one thing to it's an easy thing to do that that will breathe a lot of benefits into your career overall 100 percent, 100 percent. feedback feedback um feedback. again thinking back to myself when i've had moments of it's not possible sometimes to reply to everyone and to, and, and I, I know again from being a job seeker myself at certain <laughs> points in my life that at least just send me some sort of anything, don't just disappear, vanish. Um, but sometimes now being a, a person that is on the recruitment panel, it isn't always possible. Um, we try our best to send even the automated emails, which I know again are not great but <laughs> you know no one wants that automated sorry you didn't get the job but yeah um and i suppose this is something that comes up sometimes people will say to me well um maybe i don't have the hiring manager's email what should i do there uh you will have someone who, who even if it's whoever was organizing the interview even if they weren't part of the process i've sent thank you notes um to whoever was organizing just to say oh please let jenny know thank you for interviewing me today that will be passed on like people have no reason to hold that information back and um, so yeah agreed <laughs> awesome awesome uh now do you have any books or podcast recommendations that you know the audience can listen to read into uh, to learn more about career, career management, job searching, interviewing, anything that will help them land that job that they want and deserve. Yes, uh, there is a book by um, Alexandra Carter. I can't remember the title of it, um, but her name is Alexandra Carter. Um, mm -hmm. I am happy to find it now or share it later. And yeah, then you can share it later. I'll, I'll link it down below. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we'll do. Um, that is definitely really helpful job search wise. She does a lot of like salary negotiation stuff. Um, it's helped me personally um, go into job interviews and negotiate. I've been following her a long time. Um, really, really, really useful lady. Um, podcast wise, I listen to and I've been listening to uh, Career Warriors. Um, podcast mm. is really good as well. So those are the two. 
literally. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Awesome. No, that, that's good. I'll, I'll make sure to to link them down below for those who want to read it or or listen to. Now this brings us to the end of this interview. I want to hear any call to actions or advice that you have for professionals who are looking for the next opportunity. Uh, any advice you want to give in terms of job search, interviewing, or just simply making a career change? Anything they want to uh, share? Sure. So, I mean, what I would say is it's tough out there. Um, and especially I know that there's been loads of layoffs, not just in the tech industry, but I know mm -hmm. over here in the UK, um, people are worried about redundancies, etc. It is a tough time, um, but, you know, there is a network of people. We've talked about LinkedIn previously. Um, we've talked about social media. There's a network of people that are willing to help. Um, there's obviously free um, free events that people can go to that, again, we've touched on. There's also paid for um, services like myself that people can reach out to depending on what you need help with. So I would just say, like, hang in there. Um, again, a personal story. I graduated, like I said, 2010. Um, it was at the height of a recession um, that had started 2008. So by 2010, it was really tough. It took me some time to find a job. Similar sort of situation from what's happening now. We've just gone through a pandemic, the rest of it. It can be tough. It can feel overwhelming. Um, and unfortunately, on any given day, regardless of all of that, job hunting is a full time job in itself. It can be stressful. So really lean on your support networks, um, whether it's family, friends, your own colleagues, people you've worked with before. I'm still really good friends with a lot of people I've worked with before. Again, it's that meaningful, building meaningful relationships with people and not just, hey, can you get me a job? Because when yeah. the time does come, um, people more often than not are will we willing to help. So that's my advice. Lean on your networks, um, but put yourself out there as well. And it's tough. Also take a break. <laughs> if you can afford to have a break, if it's yeah. a day, two days, if you need a month off because maybe things you haven't been getting the right answers, always give yourself that grace and that just time off. I'm going to go to the movies. I'm going to just watch TV, Netflix, whatever it is, come back afresh, start again always helps yeah that that break is definitely <laughs> a really great <laughs> advice um for sure uh do you how can we connect with you uh i think instagram linkedin yes yes sure so i am on uh yeah i'm on linkedin just type in my name sylvia natchiliango that comes up um i am on uh, very very active on uh, instagram it's at career underscore minded underscore circles and um, i'm posting pretty much every two to three days and um, yeah and that's where i can be found yeah definitely go follow on instagram you'll find a lot of great information and just quick stuff that you'll learn something really quick she posts videos just you know with yeah. a question and then follows up with a caption explaining you a lot of things regards to career management so definitely make sure to to check out sylvie at uh, career mind the circles sylvie thank you so much for joining the new tracks club and coming to share all this wisdom for career management something i struggle with i learned a lot uh in this mm -hmm. interview and i can't wait to see you grow more and post more and learn more from you Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Wilson. I had fun. And uh, hopefully speak soon. Yes, of course. Stick around the new tracks as well by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button, and leaving a comment down below with your questions regarding job searching, interviewing, and overall career moves for engineers. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and thank you for all of your support all this year. See you next time.